Welcome to New York City. <laughs> Damn. You did that? Who? Who? He says who? Logistics always get worse. Go over and verify that's not her boyfriend. Why didn't you talk to those ladies over there? Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm kidding. Woo-ha! Here we are out in Times Square, Madison, with the company you know and love making some legendary content for you. I'm out here coaching live programs all around the world, face to face, I take people out and I teach them in person, I make corrections in real time. And I was thinking, since it's 2021, many of you over the course of, course of this COVID nightmare apocalypse of zombie madness have uh, decided to become coaches yourself in your respective field. So I thought I'd make a video about the top five mistakes that new coaches make. Maybe you have an area of expertise that you've been focusing on in your life, finance, fitness, uh, maybe it's wellness, meditation, uh, nutrition, maybe you want to be an investing coach, maybe you want to be a public speaker, maybe you just want to take great coaching skills and use them for your uh, own day-to-day -day purpose at your work, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, what do I do? And what are the mistakes I want to avoid? So let's talk about those today here in beautiful Times Square, New York. Now before I get into the content, what I want you to do is go down and hit the like button. Turn on your notifications, because I just found out that only like 15% of people that watch the videos actually get notifications. So if you want to know about the mistakes you're making, how to avoid them, do that right now. Click on the notification bell, subscribe to the video, like the video, so you don't miss out on these when I put them out. So most people that are brand new to coaching, right, think that they have to have a lot of experience first to start. And that's actually not true. It's a, it's a common misbelief that you have to be an expert at something. Now, my belief is you don't have to be an expert. You just have to kind of share where you are in the journey. Because no matter where you are, there's somebody just like you at that stage that is trying to get good. So let's say you're someone that's a beginner at um, you know, uh, working out. You don't gotta be the most buff, jacked person in the world, but you gotta be a person that says, okay, here's where I was as maybe a, a, a single parent, having no time to work out, Here's how I was able to like work out while being a parent and managing a job, and here's the results that I got in like three months. And maybe I'm not a bodybuilder, but this is what I did for myself, this is what I can do for other people, okay? So be very honest about where you are in your journey, as Gary Vee would say, document where you are in your journey, and that's gonna help you to show where you can get people. People just wanna be able to get to a little bit better than where they are. They don't wanna be like, you know, amazing 10 out of 10. If you can't provide that for them, don't lie. Just be a little bit better than where you are. Second mistake most coaches make. I think it would be maybe they try to come up with a lot of content and make a program that nobody gives a fuck about. You know, they spend 30 days or two months making their first program, thinking about it, and they try to sell the program only to realize that nobody wants their fucking program. Okay? Because the truth is, nobody cares what you actually want. I'll explain this a different way. I once heard 50 Cent, the rapper, say, if you want to make music that you love, that you care about, it's only about you. Record the music, but keep it in your fucking basement and never put it out. There's music for you, and then there's music like for an audience that they care about. It's not all about you. So it's kind of a waste of time to make a program that only you care about. What you should do, if you're gonna make a program, is find out what your audience wants. Actually speak to your audience about the problems they're having, the challenges they're having, what they're facing, and speak to them about that. You don't want none of this. Speak to them, uh, <laughs> speak to them uh, about that, because maybe they don't want that. They don't want what you think is what they want. They don't want the services you're gonna offer, your position, your angle, and maybe you're trying to solve a problem that they don't actually have. So you gotta get more clear on what your audience actually wants, and that clarity will give you power. Third mistake that people have is they think that they need a huge following or a ginormous audience. They think they need to establish this huge crowd, and I don't think you do. I don't think you need a huge crowd. You know, there's actually an article that was written a long time ago about this. Now, if you look at my YouTube channel, for example, you know, my views aren't that, aren't that large at the moment, and there's reasons for that, you know, algorithms, YouTube censorship, PC culture, holding down your freedom, trapping you, there's reasons for that, okay? I'll make a video about that one day, trust me. Uh, but the real thing you wanna realize is that even though I had uh, not as many views as I used to, my profits are more than ever before. I have more profits in my sales and my revenue than ever before. Now, how is that possible? You know, I did like about, I think, a quarter million dollars in like the last like four months or something like that, okay? How is that possible? 
Well, because views are vanity metrics. Because somebody has one million subscribers, it doesn't mean that they actually can sell a lot. It doesn't mean that at all. The other thing that people think is, they're gonna stand out by doing what everyone else is doing. If you wanna get in, you gotta fit in, baby. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> My pimp voice, you gotta fit in, baby. Get in where you fit in. But you don't have to do that. That's actually BS, it's bullshit. You shouldn't fit in, okay? It's actually gonna hold you back a lot. In reality, you're adding value to an audience. It's gonna be specifically your message and your opinion, your experiences. What you've been through is probably so unique and so personalized, you can only speak with authority to what you've been through. You can't speak to somebody else's message with authority, you gotta speak to your own. Speak to what you've been through so uniquely and articulately with your own opinions, very, very strong opinions, what you really think and feel, and that's gonna be uh, what gives value to the audience. Okay? It's not about copying other people. Nobody really cares about that. And also you just kind of like blend into the mist. So just be like another ghost in the wind if you kind of just blend in, right? In order to make an impact and actually stand out, you gotta be original in a lot of ways. Now we're at number five, numero five, okay? The last belief that you might have. And this is one that's very common, okay? You think that once you get clients or you get a student, they're gonna actually listen to you. Ha 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 ha. You'd be surprised, man. You'd be very surprised. In fact, if people pay you, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna actually listen to you. Even if they pay you, even if they pay you, they may not listen. You'd be surprised. You know, people actually pay you money to be accountable. They pay you money to be accountable. What does that mean? Well, think of it this way. The more money that people pay you, the more they're likely to actually invest into themselves. So let's say somebody gets something for free, they're not gonna use it. You know, a lot of great books are out there. Great books are amazing. It's like somebody's whole life knowledge in a, a book for $10. You can get their whole autobiography or life experience for $10. That's incredible. But we don't even finish reading books a lot of the time. So the higher the price, usually the more people actually apply it, right? This goes to show that if somebody invests 1K or 3K in a program, they're more likely to do it. And they invest 20K and that's a lot for them. That's like, you know, 10% of their salary, 20% of their salary, they're most likely gonna follow through. So my point isn't that to charge people more, that's not really my point. Uh, my point is that you gotta get them to even listen to the coaching that you're signing up for. And that might be uh, through creating a space for them to learn, uh, getting them not to judge themselves, motivating them, uh, using carrot and stick principles, all this stuff. So, you know, myself, I've been traveling in the world for six years in world tours. Uh, that's enough to travel around the globe about 37 times in, in terms of miles. It's really incredible. I've taught like 10,000 people face to face. And what I want to do is put the something together to help you get over these beliefs you have about coaching or being a influencer or a public speaker or a social media person and really help you with this to develop an audience. Now, I'm not going to do it just because I want to do it. I'm going to do it only if it's organic, uh, if it comes to the right place, if it's what you want to help you, if I can get you the 1,000 true fans, I can help you create a legacy and create content, uh, I can help you be a good coach and create space for your students to actually learn. That's the only reason that I would do this, right? So everything I'm saying to you isn't just like, because I, I'm thinking it, it's because it actually comes from practical experience and doing this myself, okay? And I've done millions of dollars in revenue in this area of expertise, right? Millions at this point, and millions more to come. And you know, people get in this and they think it's gonna be a quick uh, flash in the pan, they don't think about a career and a legacy. And I'm sure if you get into this, you wanna be able to build a career for yourself that lasts over several decades, all right? And so, I'd like to help you do that. Um, at some point, we'll have a program and a website that's available for you, and I'm working on it. I'm putting all my 10 years of experience into this, actually it's 12 years to be honest, I'm putting my 12 years experience into this. I'm really trying to make it the best thing that you've ever seen, or one of the best things you've ever seen, and it's gonna be monumental. So look out for that when it does come out. Uh, should be pretty soon. I'm thinking, I'm aiming for mid-November, around that time, and you'll see it develop in front of you and I'll document that process to make sure you, you know what's going into this as it uh, starts to unfold, all right? So that's it from Times Square, and as always, keep in touch and don't be a stranger. Booyah! Why didn't you talk to those ladies over there? Come on, man, come on, man. I'm kidding, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw. I saw.